Hi guys, welcome to Why Details. Aston Martin Vanquish Carbon Black Edition. The client is a new customer to White Details and the car is new in their ownership. It's covered 20,000 miles, it's been well used as you can see, and it's a 2016 model. Somewhere down the line you can see later on in the footage it's been mocked, it's been heavily polished and buffed. There's lots of rotary holograms and buffer trails present on the surface. The vehicle has been bought for a two-stage paint correction, the wheels off work to be treated inside and out. Some interior work, engine bay, a bit of a once over with surface protection courtesy of Modesta. So it's going to be a nice easy transformation this week, um, some after footage here and then the owner's reaction at the end to look forward to also. <laughs> That's better than new by a long way. That's a nice model. First job, wheels off, flush the arches, sort the wheels later on when the car is up on the ramp. We tackle the dirty areas, move on to the safe wash, decontamination, get it inside, get it on the ramp, blow it dry, and we can start to take a look around the paintwork. So that and more coming up in this episode of Why Details. One clean, decontaminated and blown dry Vanquish, carbon black in colour and already, even without putting the car on the lights, intense sort of proper lights, I can see there's a lot of room for improvement. There are typical holograms, sand marks in places and lots of buffer trails. So somebody somewhere has mopped over the entire thing and I think it may have had some paintwork as well. Kill the big lights for now. There's a buffer trail for you. The light, the, the lines that come off the light. So starting at the front, I'm going to work around the car, have a quick look around. I've not seen anything too scary so far whilst doing the wash. Holograms, buffer trails. 
There's a series of nice abrasions just in the top right corner there of the crest, the emblem. Someone had scratched that. These are the areas that you're going to get the sender marks left behind, the shallows, the concave sections, or the very edge of the panel where it's difficult to for the technician to machine polish. And sure enough, it's not terrible down there so far, but there are DA sander marks there to pick up. That's a bit nasty. That is a bad scratch. I only just spotted that. Low down on the near side panel. Around the handle, there's a hell of a lot of finger swipey, scratchy abrasions from miss hitting the handle. On the paint, a bit higher now on the near side, holograms up on the roof rail. And then across the roof, the roof is carbon fiber, which is nice. Light marring, can't see any buffer trails. This is a pretty busy area. There's a lot of damage up here on the rear quarter onto the spoiler. Lots of movement. The filler cap showing a few deeper scratches and swirls. Power gap between the rear quarter and the bumper. Previous polish residue. Touch up there or something missing. There we go, that's more like it. Unfinished sender marks, low down. That's the first cluster I've seen though, to be honest. Low down on the bumper, quite dull. As a result, a couple of sharp scratches here on the rear quarter. Pretty nasty. See what we can do about them. A couple of touch-ups required in places. Now these are the panels I believe have been painted the door and the front wing. I say that because even visually, it just doesn't look a factory finish. It doesn't look like the best finish. And there's a color difference there as well. A pillar front wing. A pillar is original. Uh, color difference on the doors as well. Perhaps it's just the front wing that's been painted. Uh oh. Yeah. Other than that, and one or two deeper scratches, all this movement and the mire and the swirls, this will come out no problem. Take a bit of time to do it properly, but it's a shame no polishing can correct an indifferent colour, unfortunately. Front bumper, low down. Sender marks there and there. Tight clusters. Hologram City. You can even see someone's tape line there. Look, an inch below the panel gap is a horizontal line. You can see their tape. Headlights and the mirrors are wearing PPF, but unfortunately, there are or there is moisture both sides. That's going to be in the lens as opposed to underneath the PPF. Not a lot I can do about that for now. PPF in the mirror. You can see the edges. Two sections, there's a section on the top which ends halfway, picks up again there. So the vehicle is bought for a two-stage correction, which is a cut to remove the damage and defects, the swirls and light scratches, the sander marks and abrasions. Very likely that some of the heavier areas may need two cuts, maybe three cuts to get the worst of the damage out. That's always a difficult part for a detailer to know when to stop. So it's a cut and a refine. Then it's the coatings for the paint, coatings. The rims, one of which have been refurbished as well, the offside front. Tackle the interior, dress and treat, protect the leather, sort the glass, dress the engine bay, protect the calipers. I'm gonna start high, nice and easy on the carbon roof, probably all of the upper surfaces, the boot lid, spoiler, and the bonnet. And then we can progress down both sides, front and rear, and update the customer in a couple of hours time.
6.30 update. Nearing the end of day one. A quick update for you on the progress. The haze, the lighter swirls and scratches and the movement typically is quite easy to clear. A quick cut, the majority of that comes out. Once you've delivered the single cut, it's down to you whether you hit areas again. Uh, for me, the two stage minor paint correction, we're chasing 70 to 80% defect removal. In that instance, that square foot is actually 100%. It's perfect. Height to the edge, all the way down. That's a 50-50. That deeper scratch, where's my finger? Whoa. Finger sort of overlaps into an area that I have worked. I will work that some more. But otherwise, pretty nice. Areas like this on the wheel arch edge, although we've eliminated all the movement as seen here, holograms, movement and lighter swirls that are as seen here. A couple of deeper marks left behind. For the purpose of the 50-50, I didn't really hit that fully. So what I will do when I come down to this lower portion now, and I'll just come up and over there once again. And then lights back on, um, the movement in the haze that you saw here earlier, it's all eliminated and lifted. Now waiting on refinement. So progress was roof, very nice. The bonnet, very nice. Top of the boot lid. Haven't been down here yet. And now the wing. I'm gonna just finish this area down there, the 50-50 area, before I finish tonight. Uh, polish and pad combination. I started out on the bonnet with Cartex 3000 diamond cut. Pretty aggressive, heavy cutting. And actually, a little bit overkill. It's a decent system, uh, but the paint not too damaged. Also quite soft. In areas, there was a fair bit of micro marring and DA haze left behind because of the aggressiveness of Dynacut 3000 and Lake Country's blue HDO cutting pad. Pretty much this whole off side of the bonnet was hit with diamond cut. Uh, however, with a little bit of refining, a test refining section here, still wasn't happy with the result. There's just one or two individual tiny isolated ticks in places. And because actually the damage isn't that bad, there's not a great deal to chase out. It's a soft paint, soft-ish, um, and it's like a two-stage 70 to 80% defect removal job. Knocking down the compound now to F6 yellow Kosh Chemi, which is allowing me to do the cutting without the micro marine haze being left behind quite so much, which will make the refining process uh, a doddle. Yeah. And for refining, we are gonna reach for Kartek Final Cut 9000. Tight in behind the wind mirror stem, there's a section of paint which can't be machine polished. And as you can see, sanding marks from the factory. Obviously all I can do at that point is hand polish, which I think I've already recorded from that side, but let's go again, try and reduce this down to a much less noticeable, improved and 
over a better finish. Offside the rear quarter, offside the rear corner of the bumper at the back, you may remember the flurry, the flourish of standard marks in the bottom right corner here. You can see still a tiny amount left, which is very annoying. So I'm going to hit that again. That's five inch, three inch on the perimeter down the side, up at the shoulder there, and then the one inch just in the very corner. So it's had one inch already, but she's going to need a tiny bit more. What we'll do now is mask off the diffuser. That'll do. After a quick cut, ugh, uh, I've hit that quite hard, so that'll do. End of the day, is all the way down there. What I will say off the back of that is I do find it hard, even though it's like a two-stage correction, do what you can within like an 80% defect removal polish, two-stage or a minor. Uh, I do find it hard to leave man-made damage, i.e. sander marks left behind on the surface. Scratches, rounded off scratches uh, and deeper sort of abrasions. But when it's man-made, when it's induced by polishing or sanding, I would sooner uh, do the extra effort Take it out. Last bit of the rear bumper before I think about tackling the carbon fiber, and actually that's quite a job in itself. Ooh, very flat, carboned from deposits at the exhaust. See that flat area there, and in there. Yeesh. Anyway, saw this little blemish earlier. I think in the before footage, lacquer is missing there, lack of peel, some sort of defect. And obviously, some, ah, some pretty bad marks here which need tackling, so I wanna protect the edge. But, do yourself a favor, perhaps not worth, or perhaps best avoiding putting tape on areas like that, because you pull the tape off, and it can extend that lack of peel, or the defect or the damage, and take it with you. So this is typically sort of low tack tape, but, yeah. Big from me, it's a pain. Been there, done that. It's a problem.
cloudiness and the staining back here on the diffuser. Obviously, some areas can't, they're not accessible to be polished by machine, so a lot of hand polishing to be done around here. Not too bad in the middle there. Can be improved with polishing anyway because it's slightly hazy. But a quick demonstration last night for the customer's interest and it's still not perfect there look anyway so huge difference in the clarity so the next hour i'm going to say we'll be tackling the carbon fiber this gloss strip underneath oh no it's not gloss. it is painted it's not gloss then progress down the side strips and front bumper to follow Uh, the nature of tackling this, we're not aiming for sort of the same level of correction in terms of the defects here as we would here. Naturally, it's just more of a cleanse using the abrasive of the compound, the polish, to be a paint cleaner to remove the sticky, tacky, carbon, dirty deposits. And it's done a hell of a job. So there was the big 50-50 there before. Used the one inch polisher where possible to get into the tricky areas and then finished off my hand. Uh, obviously around the exhaust there. The exhaust itself, naturally that's never gonna be shiny. It's just the nature of the material and the finish. Finger polishing around there. Finger polishing down the sides of the strut there in the middle. Three inch polisher was able to be used for the bulk, not a problem. And then more of the same down this near side. Finger polishing down onto the top of the black 
and underneath because you can only get so far that way before you get a tired line down the bottom. Uh, right, a cup of tea and a snack and I think to be honest you've seen enough machine polishing by now so I'm going to cut to another spare broccoli. Yeah, we're going to cut to after the polishing sometime now. We'll get some refining shots but next up I guess will be the engine bay. Toothpickery, touch-ups. So expect more of the same attention to detail on the side skirt and fin, on the bumper and fin, and then that side skirt and fin. I know I said no more polishing, but I just can't sort of help myself. Last one, I promise. 50-50, coming up. I'm not even going to double check it first. Straight in. Right, need you. And three, two, one. Mm. Could be better back here. Where did I see it? Uh, I guess it's acceptable. Two stage correction. But yeah. Send the marks. No send the marks. Didn't see these before. Good. This stuff's tricky to shift because it's right on the corner. There's two edges there. This edge in particular. It's going to be difficult to get the hybrid along there safely. One of the most satisfying parts of the procedure is the refining process. You do get lots back from the hours of polishing, the refining really sort of makes it pop, makes it worthwhile. So it's half past two, fast approach on half past two. I haven't got time today for doing the coatings and the body work, so what we'll do today. Major start on the interior. Ooh. I wonder if these sills can be improved. Well, they can be improved, but 
sort of not part of the package that's paid for, but that lets it down somewhat. So, vehicle has 20,000 miles. That said, the armrest is quite shiny. 20,000 miles, it's a vanquish. It's going to be sort of cared for, you would have thought, on the most part. So, should be a pretty simple, straightforward once over. Leather protection courtesy of Medesta LPS. It's worn quite oddly. I know it sounds, and I know it sounds stupid, but it does smell like an Aston Martin. Interesting shape steering wheel. More scratching on the side skirt on the driver's side. That's a nice touch as well. The carbon black edition. Again, that's not good. And of course the floor mats in these are locked in place, you can't get them out under there. Well I'm sure you can but not very easily. So, to kick things off it's a combination of the airline and the vac, the hoover to blow out the crevices and the crumbs, suck them all up and then probably tackle the leather and the door cards. Can't so much say there are many plastics in there, typically you'd find sort of the centre console and the, the door cards are plastic. It's pretty much all leather. With the interior then complete, it's onto the wheel coatings, it's onto the caliper coatings, it's onto the door shuts, it's onto tooth pickery, taking all the polish residue out of the nooks and the crannies. Like somebody forgot to do up here earlier on, the footage of me scraping the chalky polish off there. In there. Run the toothpick and the cloth through there. Run the toothpick and the cloth around the badge, in fact, great example. It's another satisfying part of the job, the toothpickery. For me, paint, looking sweet. Refined with
All of the leather uh, surfaces, the door cards, well, all of the leather, because it is all leather, has been wiped. Now this is the colour of the rinse water, which is pretty deep, so that's a considerable considerable amount of water to turn that colour. It's time to move on to the carpets and fabrics now. Towel before toothpickery. Pretty clean. After. A great success, however, one thing to watch for is slippage. So if you're down there and you're across there and down there, very delicate, very, and the paintwork around it is mint. If your hand slips and you come out of where you want to be and it hits the paint, uh, you're going to scratch it, which is exactly what I've done here. See that? That's me going down the channel, slipping. So that needs polishing. Steering wheels come up a tree. Might try and get the leather protection down tonight. LPS 1 goes on first, followed by LPS 2. Which would be perfect timings to do one tonight and to do one tomorrow.
bit of Sabicia 4 applied to the paint. Now I'm gonna go back onto the interior, get the first coat of leather protection down. LPS 01 goes on the entire leather surface and then LPS 02 goes on this afternoon sometime, which is the hard wearing uh, busy areas, like the bottom of the bolster, the side bolsters, the high impact armrest. So one, two, fabric protection, glass. Um, Going to need to do a bit of polishing on the glass. There's some real stubborn watermarks present, so that's going to be a pain. And actually, I should have done that much sooner on in the week. I should have done it when I first noticed it, which is probably Tuesday, on the basis that now the bodywork around the glass is nice. And it can be a bit of a splattery, messy, sloppy procedure to the glass, so don't want to disturb the surrounding paintwork, so I'll try something by hand. First of all, a little Modesta shipment come through and then again the curing process now for the coating oh why is the middle one not on ah oh, the middle one's gone bang brilliant The last little touch before we dress the tyres and finalise, well I suppose it's not so much a touch but more information, the centre cap, obviously we would like to align them normally to the valve cap, which this can now come off, if you didn't know already these are just colour coded and stamped valve caps so that each wheel near side front, near side rear, off side front, off side rear, go back in the same space. But unfortunately the centre caps can only go one way. There's a little lug there which the centre cap only fits one way and it doesn't line up to the valve. So in the after footage if you're wondering why, I haven't forgot. 
It's just a thing, unfortunately. Very nice Vanquish. 99,936 subscribers, less than 100 to go. Vanquish complete, two stage, another fabulous turnaround for a two stage correction. There were a handful of areas that needed a bit more here, a bit more cutting in there. As I say earlier on, any sander marks or man made defects, sander marks, buffer trails that are still present after the first cut, I'd revisit it, go over again. I don't mind the odd deeper rounded off scratch, which I'm sure you will see in the after footage. In fact, I'll make sure there are some visible. But any sander marks, I really want them to be chased out. So, two stage correction, Modesta VCO4 ceramic paint protection. VCO6 for the rims and calipers. Uh, full interior leather treatments. Glass polished with cerium oxide to remove the stubborn etching. I say stubborn, it wasn't too bad actually at all. Don't forget to head over to White Details on Instagram for daily behind the scenes and updates. Like the video if you've enjoyed. I guess by the time this video is published, it's time to celebrate. There'll be 100,000 subs, which is quite a milestone. Working at it for a long time, lots of hours and effort involved. And in fact, I used to title each episode of Vlog 031, 032, 033 over the months and years, I suppose. And I stopped listing that publicly, but I've still kept track of, in my documentation and archived footage, my storage, it still is 91, 92, 93, and 4. And this episode is vlog 100. There's been other episodes where me to use and other sort of how-to videos which haven't been involved in that, but this is officially vlog 100, which is quite apt to celebrate 100,000 subs as well. The car's with me now over the weekend until Monday morning for pickup, and I've got a quieter week next week with plenty in the diary. So thanks as always, take care, stay safe, and bye for now.
Just before I lose you guys, I just wanted to take this opportunity to reach out to say thank you again. I'm ever so grateful as the day after the Aston Martin was collected, the White Details channel ticked over 100,000 subscribers. An awesome achievement. There will be lots more information to follow about this dedicated to that an episode itself. I'm gonna wait for the YouTube play button after 100,000 milestone. YouTube send creators a play button as way of recognition for their efforts, which is personalized. And that'd be really nice to have for dedicated posts to say thanks. So that's to follow. And also more importantly, that will contain information on how to enter the giveaway for the detail. So there is gonna be a competition where somebody will win a detail. Haven't worked it all out yet, but that information to follow and you do you do need to make sure you're subscribed to the channel because it is only accessible to subscribers to the channel. And then as some extra bonus footage before we leave, um, the week after the Aston Martin was collected, I spent two days on a Fiat 500. Said Fiat is owned by a lady who works as the personal assistant to the Aston Martin owner. The Aston Martin chap wanted to treat their PA to a 2D detail with what he tells as way as thanks as a surprise for their efforts and continued hard work over the recent months and years at their business. Quite a nice touch. So the vehicle was left with me after the Aston pickup, two days on the Fiat, single stage polish, enhancement, protection, a very thorough once over every, everywhere. Sadly, I don't have the job recorded for a vlog. I do have a couple of pictures to share, but also the owner's reaction on the customer collection. With that said, just leaves me to thank you again and I'll be back on, back in touch soon. Bloody hell. Oh, look at her. Wow. Jeez. That's cool, by the way. Is that actually my car? That's astonishing. Holy crap. Thank you. It's starting to work, isn't it? Okay. It is. I've got a camera, I don't want to do it. Right, well, that's it. It's bloody amazing. It's better than you. It is. Isn't it? She's is beautiful, isn't she? This is a lovely book on photo buying yourself. <laughs> 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 um, I'm going to have to be proper careful now.